How old was your brother when that happened? Uh, I think 30 odd year old. Fucking it was uh, 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you just, uh, Did you all leave if you don't mind me got, asking? Got, 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 a, got a phone call saying uh, your brother's angry with me. I said, fuck off, you daft cunt. You fuck, you fuck. Because I thought it was a joke. I mean, yeah. we were two dead before the, the thing went. And uh, I was bad. And that's when I went off the rail to the crack and mm. self medicated. Like. And he was from Texas Holt when he was a kid. And he left a letter saying what happened to him. And I thought, bad, I got that blow because he tried to get me as a kid. And I don't know, I, I went to see the Tony Grange from the church. He said, but you were a victim. You were just a kid. And he couldn't have done nothing, blah, 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 blah. But for me, in years and years, I used to say, I should have got the police. I should have got him. I should have killed him. I should have no all these stuff. That's it. You can go on. All, you can do all sorts of yeah, yeah. I should have killed him myself. And all like you know, they're doing your own know, didn't but you, you do, yeah. You, you just think, but uh, he, he, he's gone now. But yeah. Uh, he wouldn't want me to sit miserable and be horrible. So no, not so, no. no. And you're doing good, that as well. Yeah, you, of course. You know. Well, people come every day of the week. Oh, thanks for... I'm getting, like, face FaceTime, we call it. Mm. I'm always mixed up with her because I'll ask us all. She's great on it. And what the um, thing is on it is when I'm... When I'm but people are saying, Oh, Brian, you're inspiration to me, I've got off the crack, I'm back in the gym, you just think, Oh fucking brilliant. Yeah. I don't five last night, you imagine cool. people that and if you can help one person out, you're doing good. If you can help more oh, than one, just, you're doing just, something it's, fantastic. It's probably forty, fifty people a week contact me saying you're saving you've got people. me off the drugs, you've got me this, I'm working again. I'm, I'm in the gym, I've got young lads, I'm going in the ring with them, like as a corner man. Yeah. There's a few there, there's Bill King, another lad. Uh, they're not on drugs or anything, but he's trained and he's got his health right and he's fighting for the title. Uh, and I've got another kid at the Spartan gym, or Gary Fairby's gym. Um, I'm helping people like that and they're, they're, they're an honour for me to go and help them, you know. Yeah. One lad was on the coke and he, he said to me, would you phone me son, please, I'm begging you. So I phoned him and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm taking the gear, I'm doing this. So I had about an hour and a half talk to him, packed the gear, because what he was doing, he was getting coke and he said I was having to pay for it. So he's working for his dad now, dad's giving the job. He's got, he's put three stone on and he's fighting for a title. Mm. And uh, he's got himself right in six months of talking to him. Mm. He FaceTimes me, I'm doing well, not you keep yourself right, I'll be kicking your ass if I see you and mm. all that type of stuff. And that little bit of inspiration for people, and they love it. And you go to bed and think, I'll help somebody else there, you know, it's yeah. great. And sometimes you go, I can't be asking, I'll ask you, oh, phone him, please phone. Mm. And, you know, one lad was from America and he was suicidal. And I spoke to him and I said, Look, look, it was. But my friend who passed away and he was missing his dad and everything and he was over there and his girlfriend finished back said, look, your dad wouldn't want you to do that and I don't want you to do that. I love you to bits. Yeah, I'm always here for you. About four hours on the phone and now he's, he works for the university and uh, um, no football yeah. coaching. He's a coach over there. I said, you're doing a fantastic job now. So, you know, but sometimes people get in a hole and they don't think they can get out. You can get out. They need a praise. You they need, need someone right in the yeah. corner, don't they? Well, when I did this, when the schools, the teachers said to me, oh, marvellous, because you're coming across, they're all sitting there, with bated breath, waiting, the tax man's coming around, crop and blah, and you sit there, and, and then you tell them, don't do what I've done, can we get a picture with you, and all the teachers are getting pictures, and mm. the, the headmasters phoned me saying, oh, fantastic, because they've had, like, policemen there, they've had look, prison officers, they've had people like, you could go and do, mm. because you've been there, but when, you haven't, when you've only been on that side of the fence, like the goody two-shows, or a teacher or something, they look like the they enemy. Don't to they don't listen to no. a word they say. It's just, they won't get nothing more out the policeman was there. But mm. I went through all of that. They wouldn't even go for the pee, not the toilet. You've oh. been through the experience though, haven't you? Yeah, That's well, what it is. I think, like you said, I mean, if you were, uh, if you, someone said, bake a cake, there's an egg and the flour, you wouldn't have a fucking clue. But Mary ba Baker, poof, she'd be done, wouldn't she? Yeah. So Mary Berry, sorry, she'd do it. But we've been there, we've done that. But we've been done that, uh, you know, like the college of the of the streets, type mm. of thing, or, or the, you know, You've been there, so you know what, uh, what what's going to happen to them. You're looking at kids saying, I'm going to be a drug dealer. You're not going to live, son. You're going to end up on the drugs. You, you start selling You start selling drugs. You start taking them. When you start taking them, then you're putting your life at risk. And now with all these new people about, like the Russians and the Albanians and people, no well, look, to be them, alive. not saying they're all all like that, but their way of life is totally different from ours. They're, they're, they don't value life like us. They'll so shoot you and ask killed, questions well, There's loads of way have been killed lately. There's a lad in, in Hartlepool and his eyes poked out and acid poured in and killed, Ow. tortured by Albanians. And they've got two of them and the other two are on the run or something, but they just don't care. They're not bullets, yeah, you know? Not, it's, it's not like the old school when I'd come and give you a slap, you know, we have £500, yeah. I've got my money. I'll get my money on and you'd say, right, we'll work it off. They won't negotiate. They'll just, they'll, they'll kill, just kill you. you. For 20 quid, they'll shoot you. So, so the kids watching this, it's not like the old days when wild men and... Brian would come and kick your door in. 
Albanians will come and torture you and poke your eyes out. Yeah, and and torture your family, kill you, kill your kids, and that you stay stay alive just to torture, just to make you think you torture. If you, I'd rather be killed than my wife or my brother or my sister or whatever. Yeah, you'd rather take it. Yourself, I'd rather take you? myself walk in front of the bullet and get killed. But Stop, you get, don't get gangsteritis. Oh no. Oh. Look at the state of me, I've got more. I've had, I don't drink now because all the holes I've got in me, it'll be all over the floor, but they can save. But uh, it's, it's, we're I'm laughing at, we're laughing and joking. <laughs> He's leaking now. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. leaking. Yeah, well, that's what happens, eh? You, you were telling us about Operation Gorilla. Yeah. So, yeah He's getting me off the tip. He's getting me off the tip. <laughs> no, it's exciting thing for you. So it's, it's good, good. Yeah, it's good. Have yeah. that. Uh, Operation Gorilla. So I'm in the house and I lived at... Um, Durham Road, in Stockton, had a little flyer for you. I, I, what I know used to do with them, they had six cars, they had, I had six places I slid, they had yeah. different houses, because there were that many people trying to shoot me and kill me and whatever, which people know about us. And I would like live in one house, I'd never sleep in the same house twice, I'd, I'd drive the same car, so different cars, they'd have like shitty cars, and I'd top the range cars, uh, and I'd be all over the place, never stayed in the same place. But I was in Durham Road anyway, I got a phone call of Paddy Watson, he said, Brian, look out your window, there's uh, a man at the end. Um, your bus stop, he's been there about an hour. But he, we, Paddy was a genius with radios because he was really into them and he was tuned into the, the National Crime Squad and they're outside and they're going, the Chocolation Gorilla, he hasn't moved out of the house for say six days or whatever. And I knew they were there because he told me, Paddy, so I, what, I, what I do when they're on to you, don't let them know. Go, hey, how are you? Yeah, no, that's like, like, like a knobhead. No. Don't let them know because then they'll try and get you another time and you won't know. You can so use what, it as you a... You can use it as a deterrent by the yeah. guy saying, right, I'll get me a pizza and come round with a bag of such and such and look like it's drugs and why are you raging and try and get you and they're, they're fucked again you know they've done it that many times with me I've sussed them out so Paddy's told me what's happening anyway it was called Operation Gorilla and I was that big and what happened is <laughs> one of the lads his mum's worked in the police station she was a cleaner and they had Operation Gorilla on the top with me at the top and there was like Speedy and all the people who were all with the grey guy and all them, all like, you know, like the Soprano thing, we have all the people, the photographs, so they really do it. And they had me as target one, because like I said, the police were, I said, why have you just gone to the radio? She said, wherever you are seen now, you've been a target. We have to, because you know, with all the shooting, I was getting Nick for and all the yeah. stuff and all the shit, I was getting off with it. And she said, we have to, observation, you're under observation. That's what does that mean? She said, everywhere you're seen, we have to radio through the news police station. So that's how bad it was for me. So then, they, then I got Nick by MI5. They pulled me in. Operation had, Gorilla. They, they, they had me in for a week without even a solicitor for call because I was with the lads who were like IRA and UDF. And I wasn't with them for the leading reasons. They were like negotiating over something. And I was seen from the satellites with a fucking, with no hat. And they were all wearing hats. And I got, I got no thing to pull me in. And it was over, it was over like a beer business type of thing. But no, nobody uh, got nicked enough like that. But. And then after that, I started getting worried, you know, it was like fucking Jim. I was would too, though, because... No, because you could just... About five could just keep you as long as you fucking... No, I don't know what the fuck I want. They were into all that, and then there was National Crime Squad. But Prince Andrew's Yeah, start. Yeah, it was fucking... I thought, I've had enough, that was it. So I started doing the debt, the debt collecting, I did well on debt collecting, but it was legal. But now it's... it's it's There's that many people doing it now with all these... Bond on the telly where they're going, like yeah. badges and that sort of... That, the, the best thing now is... Uh, I'm going to do a podcast, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, we're going to do the movie, and I think I'll do all right in the movie. And I, ca I can't f make a mistake playing myself, can I? No, you There's can't. There's got to be something no. wrong, hasn't there? No. And it's not like you think, you don't have to, you don't have, like, say, a book like that, and you have to remember 20 things. Mm. You just say, I'll say, yo, where's my money? Cut. Then yeah. it'll be something else. So you do it in stages. So it's not like people think, when you hear them acting all the way through two hours, you don't talk for two hours, you just, like, Run and kick the door in, back him, grab him, throw him, throw him on the floor, cut. That's it done, like 30 seconds or something or a minute. So it's, it's not as, it's not as, I think you've just got to have confidence. I like doing podcasts with Sean, but unfortunately he's going to get killed because um, he keeps on slagging the Queen off. No, Prince Andrew. Oh, Prince Andrew. Yeah, and the like, Queen. Everyone's slagging Prince Andrew off. And the oh, I, I like general. the Sex Pistols he's song. He's a sex offender. Yeah, I like the Sex Sex Pistols song, God Save the Queen. That's what's my favourite band. Mean. I yeah. think it's absolutely marvellous. The words yeah. were fucking phenomenal. Married and to I, a moron. Yeah, you're brilliant. <laughs> He's on about the speed and everything. Me and Brian actually like, like the Queen. Sean dislikes yeah. the Queen. Sean dislikes sex I, offenders, including Prince Andrew. <sighs> Try and disagree with that. You, the men of black are going to come and get you. Yeah, that's I the, hope you don't. That's the only one they haven't made to get me, the men of black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. One start till the next. I'll be like that. <laughs> hey, man, a black will come and... Yeah, Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Well, do, you think, do you think in this day and age you couldn't repeat what you did with Lee Duffy? No, no, you couldn't do it because it's... Just, what it is is the day and age now is it's all cameras everywhere. Everywhere yeah. you go. CCTV, it's not just it? cameras like phone cameras. There's cameras in cars for like yeah. insurance companies and that funny insurance. <coughs> thing, well, there was a tin man, there was a horse, and those things. Have you seen that insurance with the car? It's funny as well. Brilliant in there, brilliant advert, but it's true. You can't get away with nothing now because everywhere I bet that you gets go, unliked as well on the fucking YouTube. Yeah, I bet you the horse does. <laughs> 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 Why the wrong face? <laughs> Well, you was quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, what I was going to say, so mainly Duffy, what we did was an era like Jesse James and Billy the Kid and things like that. You can't, yeah. can't repeat it again. And technology's come forward that far now. Uh, you just can't do them things. And the kids now are all, you go to the door now, they'll stab you. Yeah. They'll chop you off the next. So it's like, same as like the Essex boys in a way. Mm. And same as like, uh, yeah. have you ever heard of anyone called Cass? Yeah, black yeah, guy. the black lad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, them days have gone because it was just violence in them days. Yeah, yeah. Until the and now it's, come out the, the, and it was nice. Yeah, yeah. And then the coke come out and it went back to violence again. the crack again. one at the crack, crack destroyed yeah. and then the people are taking it. It's, and, and like you said, the coke. And like, I said to someone, when the coke come out, it was good. Yeah. It's f- full of fillers. And you're taking stuff, you don't even know what it is. So for you built there buying cocaine, it's not like it was in the 80s. It was called Charlie, people say, because of Prince Charles. Yeah. So I think, all right, these throw the family up to something. So they might have been knocking it out. It was called Charlie because of him, the same. So it was weird, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, it was, that, that's you a funny thing. CIA yeah, knocking it out. Yeah, well, the CIA made crack cocaine. They in America, invented yeah. it. Can you edit that, please? Do you know why they invented it, the CIA? Do you know what the reason was? To stop the Panthers, the Black Panthers. Oh, and yeah. what they've done is they had the got CIA, right. they've got let, let the, from Vietnam, they let them bring the heroin in. Yeah. And they swamped the streets in like the, the in Black the corpses, wasn't it? The soldiers? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah they brought yeah. the corpses. And what they did is they put it in Harlem and place it after, they let them they destroy themselves. So then Black Panthers walking around because yeah. they were like the Black Fists, just the only thing it was called when he did it in 74. Uh, they had they were powerful, really powerful. They were taking over America type of thing, and they thought I know what to stop this. So they made crack cocaine. They CIA and put it in the streets, and then the, there would be the blue gang, the red gangs, and all shooting each other. That's and over. Yeah, yeah, pathetic. Yeah, but you yeah. know what about the main because you've been yeah, there. Yeah. So I'm right where I'm talking about. And I'm they've actually got, got, they've actually joined together now, haven't they? They're actually in unity. But the, yeah, have they? Yeah, but it's been a long time coming. Like mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, crack it so many, like, But I, I try to get them dying. all together. I try to get all the northeast together, and like runners. I mean, cops used to come to me and they say, you're like the mafia, you, you've got everything, mm. oh yeah, like that, but some cops didn't give a shit, they did that, well, they're rarer and everything now, but nobody, nobody dared, no, no, but when Lee got killed, a lot of people would say, ah, he, he won't be able to do what he did, and then when I got in the, in the fight with Garth side, I was getting be- better than me, he won the fight, then I had the second fight and destroyed him, absolutely destroyed him, and then I went to fight him again, not, not many people know this, I'll tell you this one, so I went to Paddy Conroy's, and I went to fight him, and I went to Paddy Codroy's house, and Paddy Codroy's written it in his book, it's called Fog in the Tide, and in the passage he says, Brian Cockrell come, and I went to fight Dave Garside for 20 grand, he had 10,000 pounds, he was with Speedy Ormsby, it was Mark Ormsby, one who got killed, and they'll come in, and he was having a bit of blow, Paddy and then they, and I, I tried to arrange his fight, and Dave Garside come on the phone, he said, oh, I haven't been trained, I said, well, I wasn't fucking training, with you come, and I was off my on the ecstasy, I said, let's have the third fight, you won the first one, I won the second one, let's see who the third. Someone's going to die in this one, Dave. I said, it ain't going to be me. And he really didn't want to fight me. So that was that was the end of that. But that's in his book. That was, he was partners with him then. They were like... I wonder things. why he didn't want to fight you. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's Teesside like these days? Does it calm down? Yeah, but what Teesside's like, it's like... Stockton, where we live, we just had the outskirts in Stockton, Middlesbrough. It's like one of the worst places in, in Britain for fucking people getting killed. Is it? Well, Speedy's son... He's just got a deal. He's just killed someone. He's not gone to be the one who died. Or, or tell you what, he's just killed someone. He's in jail for murder now. It's all over drugs, it's, isn't it? It's all over it's drugs. It's just, just, just fucking drugs. You need, to, you need to legalise it and get, get it out, oh, get it out yeah. of the hands of gangs. Well, if you legalise heroin, there'd be no Taliban making no money. Right? If you legalise heroin, there'd be no gangsters making any money. No. There'd be nobody stealing out of shops. The prison wouldn't be full. And people would be getting administrated by doctors and nurses. So therefore... They wouldn't want to steal. So kids would be fed. 
They don't want to legalise it because they make too much money. Yeah, the government, the government, the government are all in on it. Years ago, a psychiatrist over here called John Marks, he started the first um, legalised stuff, didn't he? Mm. And he, he, he oh, they had the free heroin in Witness. Yeah, free yeah, heroin yeah, yeah. in Witness, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the programme that Portugal picked up. They stopped in Witness because the shoplifting collapsed. Yeah, I would do. And all the, all the fucking... It was uh, like all the It was going to roll out across the whole country. Yeah. yeah. The Americans found out, called Downing Street, and they stopped it. Yeah. It was like psychiatrists. All the Americans... Kick the war on drugs going. Well, all, all it is was them is just saying, no, fucking bullshit. They want that. They, 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 oh, like yeah. Granger, like, like Zemo. Yeah, do you know like, do you know, like the drugs, right? If they want to stop it, they could stop it. They could jo do what they want. George H. W. Bush was a bigger trafficker than Pablo Escobar yeah, through yeah. the CIA. Yeah. He was running it. Well, the CIA oh. were when the CIA were the CIA were letting them do what they wanted. They were letting them do what they wanted, right? We're letting the, the Pablos and all them let them do what they wanted in the beginning. Uh, yeah. In the beginning, just yeah, let them yeah. do what the fucking want. They could sell yeah. it, let them sell the drugs and everything, because it was money going into the government in America. And they were and did financing you, the war in the Caribbean. Did you, the did you know and that my, Miami? Miami was made. <laughs> Through drug dealers. Absolutely. Miami was uh, just like fucking Red Cow, or like Blackpool, a little tiny place. The drug dealers went there and they were buying all the best hotels, houses, and everything. They were fucking, they built Miami out of yeah. drugs. And the most places have been built with drugs. And if you stop the drugs, I've got all them people who lose their jobs. And all the, they reckon that like, it gets made in Afghanistan to get, and then it comes through Pakistan on the plane. There's 300 people on the plane. And there's maybe a hundred people carrying drugs. That's what I got told off somebody yeah. who works at the airport. They can't stop like a hundred people. So it's just coming through. But if they really want to do the good, they really want to what do the good. What they do is they arrest a few of them well, to, show that, to show yeah. that they're fighting the yeah. war on drugs. Yeah. And let the, re yeah. let the rest through. So they're like, there's like a hundred K, they get two and go, look. Yeah. Oh, they've done well. And what they do, they make the, the kilos probably worth like 30 grand each, but they put it on the street value, 200,000 pounds. They've took off the street. Exactly, yeah. It's all yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's George H.W. Bush loved to pose with record seizures of cocaine. Yeah. While he was bringing the coke in, and he, he was asked at a dinner, um, I, I, I've got to research this, and he was asked at a dinner, how are you getting away with fighting a war on drugs while being, bringing the drugs in? And his response yeah. was, this is so beyond what the public can imagine I'm doing. Yeah. They will never fucking well, believe it. Says, they will it, never it, believe it's true. It's like, it's like UFOs. The more you talk about it, the more people just believe it. Yeah. Because yeah. they put it out there. So they say, there's aliens. So people don't believe there really is aliens. So yeah. it's, it's that analogy, psychology. And, it's just, and like, the, 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 what do you call it? The government. The Americans were getting it. And then they'd bust you. Well, like, I've had it in, with me and where I live. I've seen the corruption with the police years ago. It's not so bad now. They we're getting in the Americans and we're getting, say, two ton. They put it on the telly and everything. Then they'd go and fucking sell it. Yeah, that wouldn't yeah. go. That wouldn't go and get burnt and then they'd show you. It showed you the loads of shite. Summer, but it's yeah, it was shite. It wasn't it's drugs. drugs. And they'd sell it on. <laughs> they'd think I'm fucking daft. In Colombia, Escobar would say to the police that who were on his payroll, go and raid this warehouse now. You get your promotions. America will send you more helicopters to fight the war on drugs and more weapons. The, invite the media. Pose with the drugs. And Paul loads of petrol on all the gear, but it's not even gear. But when it, it well, it was gear, but when it was all over, yeah. he just gave it back to Pablo and he sent it to America. Yeah. All allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> yeah. And that's why it was 90, I think he said, something like 90% of it was uh, coming from him, wasn't it, in America? In, in them days. Escobar. He was, he was 7 million, 7 billion. From, through Colombia, yeah. The seven million and the Cali cartel as well. Chapel, oh, yeah. 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 They were fucking powerful, clever people. So I've got this question here then. Um, sometimes you take ease during the day. Close all the curtains while turning your music up. You had your own private raves during the week in yeah. the front room. Yeah. You rang up your best friend's boss to tell him, Lee won't be coming in today because he's taking drugs with me. Yeah. The lad got sacked. He was so a he big man. Up, he rang up the boss and made him give him his job back. That's a true story, yeah. <laughs> he got the sack. The, I said, fuck in the air. Lee's having a couple of days off. He's with me. It's Brad Cockrell. So the phone went and sacked him. I refunded them back up and said, you don't fucking ding it. I'll bend your fucking place down there today. <laughs> and the fucking re re did give him the job back. True story, yeah. And that was fucking mad, mad. We'd party. We'd go to a party. We used to have a lad called Fred Tates and it was, he used to have a loft. Because I used to hate the light when you had E. I used yeah. to hate like the dark, man. I can't stand the light. So I'd go in there and we'd have... He'd have like manic, sledge out rooms. He'd have, yeah. yeah, like it was upstairs. It was all um, floorboard things put on yeah. And he'd have mannequins and there was like mattresses you could go on. It was spotless, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, was, he was a gay lad, actually. 
and uh, he, he was a nice kid, and he used to go to the raves and uh, Joe's have the best apartments too, though. Yeah, you know, lovely um, person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Lovely lad. But um, we used to go there, me, me, my mate Flea, and a few others, and we go after the the, the clubs. And uh, we because the raves would be on, but you still go after say two or three in the morning. Sometimes go there and get a bit of break because yeah. the music would do you anything. And then so you'd be chilling out and have a few in talking and that. And we got anyway. We had the music on, fucking blasting. And uh, the neighbours complained. And he had the police come, about thirty cops come. Went, who's in there? Like he said, Brian Cox. I'll just leave him. Be all right. Leave him. Be all right. Just leave. And they fuck off. And I, I've had the police come behind me and see me and go. Oh, I didn't know it was you, Brian. Just drive off and fuck. I was honest to God, they were fucking petrified in them days. There was no CS gas. There was no fucking guns. There was hardly anything around. There was only 17, I think, armed police at then. And they had to have permission to get the guns out then. I bet they, even the dogs didn't want to go and see Well, well I'll tell you a story about the dog. I went to attack someone. He's dead now. And uh, I had the three-way walkie-talkie. He had one lad in the pub. Yeah. And I'm on a field. Anyway, I'm on a field. And the next minute, I'm in this growth, all these bushes. And there's, like, wire around it, like a fence. Quite, quite big. Like a big roundabout thing, and I'm on this field anyway. And the lads in the house, we've got a young lad, something. I said, We've got the stuff. He said, I'm in now. He said, well, it's now under the, we, This man's supposed to have 50 grand. He had 50 grand under the gas cupboard in them days on the stairs. Big take deal. He went abroad. So we thought we'll have him. But anyway, it was his uncle's house. So anyway, fucking, he's in the pub. So we've got the lad taking an eye on the uncle, and he's broke in. The big guy in the house, the lad couldn't find anyway. He said, I'm in the loft. He's found about five key. So he's got the fucking stuff. Someone had seen me on the field. On the place, the cops fucking come, see me, and set the dog. And the dog run towards it to get me, but I let it come right in, and I jumped the fence. It couldn't get over the fence because all the bushes yeah. that thick. So I run, I'm fucking, I was massive. I run like fuck, and I jumped on the fence, and the fence car. But the dog ran after the copper. <laughs> <laughs> I bit the fucking copper. Like and the dogs, they, they, it's quite dark, you know. And they, there's two cops, one with the one in the lead, and they let the dog in the thing. And I've got up the bush and jumped over the thing. But the dog can't go up because it's about this high. So it can't get a so jump. Just go for the copper. So, so it's gone out, back out when it come in. And it's running and get him, and it's run after the fucking cop was running after me. Anyway, I, I jumped on the fence, the fucking fence collapsed, and I hit my ankle, I twisted my ankle. And we got Nick, I got Nick, but I got off with it because it was, it was only radio and I had a balaclava. But, but, but uh, I thought someone's going to get a good eye, and I just said, you know, the excuse, but they let me out the next day. Yeah, but, yeah that's a true story. Yeah, the fucking dog chased the cop and bit him. <laughs> <laughs> I like dogs, mate. I do. I've got, um, my wife, she's got a. It's our dog, American, uh, American Bulldog. Oh, right. And we've, I've got a American Kate there, and they're, they're massive. They're Did they get on? Well, we're getting them together now. We just started getting together because our friend's been looking after the, the Bulldog. But the Bulldog... You've got to be careful, though. It's a, the bulldog's like, bulldog's like, I think, like, like a fucking... Like a, like a, like a canine, you know, like a fucking... Yeah. Like a robot dog. He's like... The least little noise, but he's only two. Where the other one, he's in Medicare and Kate, he's seven, he's like more laid back. He's more fine. laid back, yeah. But the little, the little one, he has, she's got him, she gets, our lasses loves that, but she's got him like a comeback jacket, so he's like a fucking, he's got, a, he's even got a hoodie, like that, and he's got this little hat on, and he's running about, mm. and, he, and everyone's like, look at that dog there, and he's got mm. like an, an army jacket, so he's like one of them dogs, like, no looking for the commando, like, like commando dog. Yeah. That's what I, I said, get in there. And he's like, in the, and he's got a black one. It's like the black ops with his black gear on. You know, like in the back garden. It's mm. funny, hasn't he? I bet the Akita's looking to see you, daft bastard. Look at you. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, he hasn't seen him yet because there's oh. the, 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 like, so she's about 15 mile where the, the dog lives. But we're getting them. Add muzzle them first. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Just for the what we're going to do. Just, just until he what we're going to do is we're going to put we're going to put them between the fence. Yeah, one out and one in, and there's a baby gate thing. Yeah, and don't like that. Take them for walks, and I mean, but I think they'll be all right because um, Scrappy's laid back, and he, yeah, but he's he's fucking huge. He's about eleven stone, mm. and his head's like a fucking grizzly bear. The massive and many Kate is around the mm. but uh, yeah, there's no one nice. getting in that fucking house with them no. two dogs. I did. Mine was an Alaskan Malamut. Yeah, they're nice dogs, aren't they? They're nice dogs. Mm. 